hope you would find a little interesting. So, the problem is like very <laughs> practical. So, you do this, you, you all of you use this uh, smartphones devices, you know, you click here and then you know suddenly you find the region whether which you are, right. Then you sort of ask this question that I am at this GPS location and uh, tell me the restaurants nearby or movie halls nearby, <laughs> right. <laughs> or academic institutes nearby. So, you can ask these queries and in all these queries, what you essentially want to do is, uh, you know, when, when, when for example, when we studied this computational geometry, this GPS thing and if, if someone told me in the class that you, know, you will have a GPS, which will give you the coordinate of where you are, I did not believe what he was saying. I thought that these are in the books and maybe they are somewhere, but. But these days, you know, these things are very common, right? you sort of grow up with it. <laughs> it is a matter, it is a completely different matter altogether that I do not get used to it, but, but theoretically at least I understand a part of what is going around. I will try to convey that to you. Okay. So, the problem is as follows, <laughs> you know, think of this Voronoi diagram subdivision of the plane. So, this is kind of a subdivision of the plane where you have broken up the plane into some convex region. There can be other kinds of subdivisions as well. So, I will you know when I talk of the problem today, I will talk of even a more you know general kind of framework which even would subsume your Voronoi diagram. So, essentially what you have is a planar subdivision where you have you know subdivided the plane into some convex regions and you click somewhere and you want to know which subdivision you are in. So, think Voronoi diagram, you click somewhere. So, when the GPS what does it do? It gives you the coordinate right, some x y coordinate of where you are and this structure is there possibly stored in some data structure and you have to figure out quickly which cell you are in. Now, if you exhaustively search all cells to figure out in which cell this x y lies then like you would not be happy, right. You, know, you are this kind of new generation and you are very impatient. You know, if it takes linear time, you would be very unhappy. So, you have to give you something better, you know, at least log n, let us see. So, this is the essence of the problem that we would be discussing today. So, the topic is like point location in a planar subdivision, that is what we would be studying today. <laughs> now, first let us look at <laughs> so this is this So, you know all sort of subdivisions that can be represented in this form which is a planar straight line graph would be amenable to what I say from now on. So, a planar straight line graph is like a Voronoi diagram is a planar straight line graph. So, you have vertices edges. So, you can store the structure as a graph where the edges are straight line. I will talk of such a subdivision. Now, <laughs> planar straight line graphs are essentially stored well by a data structure called DCEL, it stands for, I think the D is doubly, doubly connected edges. <laughs> so, let us see for a moment what this data structure is. So, if you have a subdivision, what are the basic structures that you have you have with you? 
like you know think higher dimensions when origit was talking no you have zero dimensional facet one dimensional facet two dimensional facet you need to store them so let's talk of plane so what you have is point zero dimensional one edges one dimensional and you have facet so i have to store them in such a way that mind you it's a planar connected region so if i start from any point be it inside the region or on the edges or on the vertices i should be able to walk to any other plane right that's what a planar like that's your notion of planar connected graph no if you start from any point in the graph you should be able to walk to anywhere in this graph so i will sort of try to do that in a geometric setting where you have a planar subdivision and i would be able to by storing this planar subdivision in this doubly connected edge list in a certain way so that i am able to walk from anywhere to anywhere and in that i would try to minimize the amount of storage that you do okay <laughs> so what i have is edges rather i have vertices so i'll keep records for so keep records for vertices edges and facets <laughs> so say in your walk you have come to a vertex right what you now would possibly want to do is to try to get out of this vertex to go into an edge then from there to possibly a face so on so forth no so what i would the record that i would keep for a vertex is <laughs> i'll store obviously its coordinates right so some so for the vertex record would be <laughs> all these vertices that you have say all these voronoi vertices you have maybe <coughs> some n many vertices so for each vertex i would store its coordinate and if i have got into this vertex i need to get a way out so this vertex might have edges which are going out edges which are coming in there can be multiple edges right you have seen in voronoi diagram that for a voronoi vertex there are many edges incident to it so what i'll try to do is <laughs> though there is no orientation on the edges of the voronoi diagram i'll orient them in some way how i'll tell you very soon so the moment i orient edges so for a vertex there would be some edges that come into some edges that go out so for a, a vertex i will store one edge which has this vertex as its origin okay so i'll just store for v1 so if you if this was your v1 i store e1 with it <laughs> so e1 has v1 as its origin only one i have store fine so this is what i store for a vertex record <coughs> now edges are those which would sort of link vertices to faces so i'd be a little bit careful when i store edges no i am not storing incident edges one one outgoing edge just we'll see if we can walk with this much of information else we can you know introduce some more information so that we can walk fine okay now mind you <laughs> uh, okay for an edge so for an edge of a voronoi diagram no? so let this be a voronoi cell i should have some way of walking on this voronoi cell you know going around this voronoi cell i in this direction or maybe in the other way around so what i would do is i will keep for each edge so you can think of an edge like you had this vertex record you can also have edge records
So, there will be for each edge, for each edge E in the record, I will keep two orientations of it. So, say if you fix on this convention that I will orient the faces in a particular direction say clockwise. So, you can think of this that I orient the faces in a clockwise direction. So, then in your vertex record store the edge E as this, the other one you store as its twin. So, <laughs> this was my original edge in the Voronoi diagram and in the data structure I two keep two copies of it. One such that you can use it to go along the Voronoi face in a particular direction and you would obviously want to store it it is twin in a different direction. Now, mind you <laughs> if you are working on this face in this order and you want to work obviously the other face the other face also you would work want to work on this order right. So, this for this face this is the clockwise order. So, for the other phase this is the clockwise order and in this clockwise order as because I have oriented the twin in this direction I can walk right the neighboring phase in the same direction. So, that was the idea and what I would do is for so in the edge record I will corresponding to an edge I will keep this and I will keep its twin record also fine. And I will sort of keep a pointer in this data structure which tells me that this particular thing is a copy of this one right. So, that <laughs> now why I need it say so during my traversal I might think of walking on faces only right. So, that means so if I walk on faces and I, I am going to jump to another face, then I would obviously edge is the boundary which I want to cross through. So, say for example, for a face I know one of its edges and then using its twin pointer I can quickly jump to its neighboring face right. So, I can walk along all the faces now, agreed. That is for you when you write your program. I will give you the overall idea. No, <laughs> so it depends on you know how you implement your abstract data types, what language you write your programs in. <laughs> Fine. So this was about. There is something more. I might even want to walk along the edges. No. So then, for an edge, when I am on an edge, I should know its succeeding edge and its preceding edge. So, those sort of pointers should be there. So, what I now do is I look at a face <laughs> and I keep the uh, bounding edges there and a sort of this was my E, this was E dot twin <laughs> this is E dot origin.
and similarly you have uh, oriented edges like this no <coughs> you have all this so you have the oriented edge so these edges are So that means for an edge you know its twin that allows you to jump across spaces, for an edge you know its preceding edge and a succeeding edge, so you have pointers to those records, fine. So how you keep it as Sarah was asking, <coughs> so in your, so this is your record for edge E, no? so you will have multiple such records for each edge, so for e, this E you store its twin its previous, its E, no. So similarly this E dot prev would also have some entry somewhere. So for this E dot prev, E dot next would be E. So all this kind of relations you can impose on it, fine. Okay. So this was about edge and <laughs> for an edge I also store its origin. So, E dot origin. <coughs> now, what about face? For a face, what I do is, I'll again have a face record. For a face, I would keep <coughs> just one edge. So this this edge E. Okay. Now <laughs> I would also store for each edge E one of its face. Right? The face that it lies to your left. So this sort of would give you, the moment you store a face record here, then that so you have these three separate records, no, vertex record, edge record, face record. Now the moment you store this last information, then you essentially have a pointer from your edge record to your face record. So now also in your vertex record you have one thing on your, one information on edge. So these things essentially ties them, this, these are kind of pointers that ties this structure. So this is essentially the nutshell in which you store a subdivision that can be represented by a planar straight line graph. Yeah. That face, the face that lies to its left. Left. No, I have oriented the edges, no. So E dot twin will have a different face. So what now I have been able to do is I can now walk on the edges, I can jump from face to face and if I can walk on edges I can go from vertex to vertex as well. So I can make these transitions from vertex to edges, right, <laughs> edges to edges, edges to vertices as well because for an edge I know what is its origin, right and I can even jump from edges to faces. So this is kind of a very rudimentary idea, you, there are some more details which you know if you want to really write a program for you know storing such a subdivision, you have to you know be a little bit more careful, but this is the essential idea. So this is a data structure that would allow you to represent, I mean see the, the diagram, the Voronoi diagram that I was showing you or even the higher dimensional Voronoi diagram or Delanoi triangulation or it was showing you, this is a geometric structure, right. It was appealing to you as a structure, but really how you walk around that structure has to be implemented in your computer by 
suitably representing that structure using a data structure. No? Orijit was at some point was talking of some word representation of some geometric structure, no? some intervals, things he was talking. So essentially, it is it's a nice thing to understand the geometric structure. So that is okay for mathematicians. But for computer scientists, we need to even represent that structure in some suitable data structure such that we can you know walk around, do certain things on that structure. Right? So this is the <laughs> broad idea of a doubly connected edge layer. But again, this also till now does not give you, this allows you to walk on the data structure, but this does not give you still a logarithmic search. No? You know, given a point, you can now you know look at all face records to figure out which face you are in. Then possibly say once you you know search all the faces to figure out which face you are in, then possibly if your car is moving across these faces, you can simulate the movement on your data structure now. Right? But I have give, I am giving you no guarantee on quickness. I am giving you some linear guarantee that you can search things in linear time and I have given you a representation on which you can walk, you do certain things. <laughs> right? So think of a GPS query somewhere, you have given a coordinate, I search for all faces, get into the face and now I have a suitable data structure that can allow me to simulate a walk of your car or your cycle. Fine. Now I would try to impose on this doubly connected edge list a kind of a subdivision which will allow you to do the search in better time. <coughs> so the next data structure that I am going to talk of is what we will essentially do is <coughs> if I get back into the Voronoi diagram thing, okay, let us start talking freely copy. So this Voronoi diagram is given to us and I have been able to store this Voronoi diagram in a data structure. Now essentially what I would want to do is divide them into suitable subdivisions even such that <laughs> I will even want to divide this say each cell into some suitable shape such that mind you I am looking for a logarithmic kind of search. If I am looking for a logarithmic kind of search, what sort of search I am looking at? A binary search. No? So a binary search can be done on something which has a order, right? some order. So I have to in some way impose certain order on this, some greater than less than kind of order such that I can quickly First thing is like, well, I will subdivide them in as much ways as I can. So what is your idea then? Throw up some ideas. Through each Voronoi vertex, draw horizontal and vertical lines. Right? What will happen? So, if you are drawing through this vertical and horizontal line, right? So, you will break them into some kind of triangular shape, or if you are a little bit careful, maybe some trapezoidal shape. These are kind of linear structures. So, bounded from above and below by either an edge of the original subdivision or some vertical or you know, horizontal line <coughs> above below and some lines on the right. So now what you can do is, so your plane has been subdivided by some vertical and horizontal lines, well, well even you know modify this a little bit very soon. But what I have been able to do is I have been able to draw some vertical and horizontal lines to divide the plane. But mind you, this vertical and horizontal lines I did not draw everywhere. I drew it only at the Voronoi vertex. So these square kind of partitions or this kind of trapezoidal partitions of the plane were induced by the Voronoi diagram. 
Now I, I even ask you to do a little bit better. What I say is, <laughs> don't shoot the line full. Shoot a line <laughs> above and below from each Voronoi vertex <laughs> till it hits another edge of your subdivision. <laughs> right? So, this will sort of induce a interval order on the x axis, kind of do a binary search there. So, you have your now code point coordinates, you do a binary search there that will quickly bring you to a an x interval within which within this slab your clicked x y point lies, right. Now, because of this horizontally drawn lines also, you also have an order on this slab, no. So, again do a binary search on that order. <laughs> so, this is the essential idea. So, now I will you know make this idea more formal, make this more technical to really make things fall in place. So, it this is about, so you have this doubly connected edge list which maintains this basic structure and on top of this you have this induced structure that allows you to really figure out your search. So, essentially what you have done is this big convex pieces you have broken up into smaller manageable convex pieces within which you can do binary search and you store this. So, for each face record now you would store the subdivisions of this convex face as well, fine. So, now once you get into one of those smaller faces, you know which bigger face you are in, right. Okay. <coughs> what I did was I had this bigger subdivision with me and then I drew this vertical and horizontal line. So, what it does? It breaks each bigger convex piece into smaller meaningful convex pieces. I will show you that they are trapezoids, right. Now, what I claim is this trapezoids has a nice x y order, x order and a y order. So, your clicked point has a x coordinate. So, with this x coordinate on this interval, this joint interval, do a binary search to get into the interval in you are in. So, what it does for you is it locates you within a slab, right, x kind of, kind of a vertical slab within which your point is. Now, as because you have drawn horizontal lines, you also have an order on that slab. Again, do a binary search there. What it will, right, what with the y coordinate, what you will get into is a smaller convex piece. Now, just store the information that this smaller convex piece is part of this bigger convex piece. So, now you know which face you are in, good. So, this is the philosophy. Now, let us do the basics. So, the, the, <laughs> the decomposition, so we are now getting into planar point location and the decomposition that I would talk of is known as trapezoidal decomposition. <laughs> okay. The scenario is as follows, say I have region within which I am inserting line segments. So, now I even talk of general situation where you have line segments, right. Voronoi diagram is a special kind of division. I now even talk of a general situation. You have line segments and that is going to induce a uh, division on the plane and I am going to search within this structure. Assume without loss of generality that uh, no two points share uh, the same x coordinate. I would allow this, this is allowed that there can be uh, vertices in your uh, input which is shared by more than one line segment, but this is like a little bit of a problematic case for me. You can handle it, but let us for this class let us forget about it. So, we will forget about this situation, okay. Now, what I do is I shoot a race, <laughs> okay. As I said, the initial idea was to shoot race full, but now I will not shoot, uh, shoot race full, but I will stop whenever I either hit a segment or hit the boundary of the big box within which all line segments lies. So, shoot a ray from here. Okay. 
again shoot a ray from here. So, shoot a ray above, shoot a ray below. See, I am even considering a more general situation, right? These are just arbitrary lines again. Voronoi diagram is a special case of it where uh, it is a nice region. You can do the same thing on a Voronoi diagram. Again, from this, you shoot. The earlier thing was like I said that from each point shoot a ray above, shoot a ray below, but then again like I am trimming it to the upper and lower line segment that I shoot. So, what I have done is, so now I have created a subdivision, subdivision of the plane, right. So, this is and each subdivision is now a trapezoid, agreed? Now, remember one thing, if I did had shoot full line, then the searching would have been very easy. In here, there is a little bit of a problem, because each one is a trapezoid, no? So, earlier if you had did shoot all vertical rays full, all horizontal rays full, then given an x coordinate you can quickly figure in which thing you lie in and then again in this slab you do a binary search, but in here the structure is not like that. Now, why did I shift from this one to this one? Because in this your number of cells could have been huge, no? kind of have got to n square kind of thing. No, because you have n vertical lines and sort of n horizontal lines, they might end up producing order n square cells and some of the cells are really redundant. So, that is the reason I did shoot it this way, fine. <laughs> so, but in here also I have created many trapezoids, no. So, let us see what is the number of vertices that I have in that the existing vertices will I will also count and the newly created vertices I will also count, fine. So, your first lemma is, can you see this color from the back? Yeah. <laughs> so, number of vertices let us figure out what it is, number of trapezoids, let us figure out what it is. All, all such vertices that you need to, yeah. What else can it be? Hmm. Uh, you can do the this is a this is a yeah, surely right. It will be bounded by one segment from above, one segment from below, and the other left and right things are vertical lines only, no? So they are parallel. Which is? Yeah. There is a rectangle, but a rectangle is kind of special trapezoid like this. And that is the reason I made this, you know, you can sort of move around a little bit and then. See, the point is when you study geometry theoretically, try to keep this away. I mean, then it is like it sort of uh, disallows you to appreciate the algorithmic content of it. When you write programs, when you really go to implement it, this sort of things you should take care. But the catch in geometry is 
this sort of you know boundary cases or this sort of what should I say this uh, the ones for which I you know take these assumptions to get rid of this sometimes it affects the theory as well. Those are the situations when you should be very careful. If you remove this uh, general point assumption and this sometimes rarely, but it affects your theory as well. But in most cases you can get around this. Okay. <laughs> Fine. So, let us count the number of vertices. Quick. 6 n right because for each vertex you shoot a line above below it goes and creates two new vertices and you you have this one. So, per segment you have two vertices. So, you have 6 n and include this 4 right. So, linear the number of vertices that you have created is linear. So, this is no longer a question for us. Now, let us look at the trapezoids. What is the number of trapezoids? How do you count trapezoids? Now, this is a now see in in combinatorial counting essentially what I am trying to do I am trying to count a geometric object which is kind of a very easy counting as compared to what Origit was doing in his last lecture yesterday. Remember what he was doing? He took a vertex sort of oriented the edges up and below then he said at least n by 2 here and then he was looking at the faces incident to this and was sort of counting the number of faces to fix that bound. So, the essential idea was that I am to count the combinatorial complexity of a certain geometric structure, but I cannot get a good handle over it. So, what I will do is I will look at another geometric structure which is easy to count and sort of relate it with that I will count this that would fix the counting of this. So, in here what I do is I look at a trapezoid and I look at its defining vertex. Okay. So, <laughs> for a left vertex of a line segment now look at a line segment right I have not I have disallowed this vertical kind of line segment. So, look at a line segment look at its left end point. This yellow color can you see from the back? No, no, no. Yellow is not good, red is good. Right. So, look at a vertex, look at a left vertex of a line segment, right. <laughs> to it, I will charge rather, it is responsible for creating these two trapezoids. because it had did shoot a ray up, shoot a ray below and there was a segment going through it. So, it must have created two trapezoids that is one. So, in here you have two and the right segment of it would create one right. <laughs> because when you are on the right segment there is no one obstructing you from the right side it ends here. So, if you shoot a ray above then for this trapezoid this is the left defining vertex. So, what essentially I do is for a trapezoid I sort of you know transfer my charge to my left defining vertex. So, each trapezoid sort of transfers its count to its left defining vertex. So, now each line segment if you now come back to the line segment and look at its vertices each left set left end point has got a charge of 2 and each right point has got a charge of 1. So, in in all you have 3 n line segment sorry 3 n trapezoid and a 1 for the the extreme one right. 
because this has been created by this one. So, this is pre n prime. So, the story from here is the combinatorial complexity of the structure is linear. So, what each each trapezoid what it does? It defi it transfers its charge to its left defining vertex. See this this look at look at any 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 say such a trapezoid. This is defined by what? Only this vertex. This vertex is going to be responsible for only one trapezoid to its right. But this vertex is responsible for two trapezoids to its right. This. This. Yes. So, this, this is responsible for this and this. This. This is responsible for this. What above? No, this. No. This will come from somewhere else. No. This will come from this. So, do not confuse among vertex and trapezoid. What I am doing is, I am trying to count trapezoid. But for each trapezoid, what it does is safely transfers its responsibility to its left defining vertex. Now, just look at the vertexes, vertices and count the number of charges deposited at each. Fine. So, this was a general argument. No? Three n plus one. This is an upper bound. No? In some cases, this might even be less, but this cannot go over this. That is what I proved. So, to each vertex, to each vertex, what is the charge that can come? No? Only through its defining trapezoid. Fine. That is what I said. No? To each vertex, these two charges. What is the what are the charges? The number of trapezoids that this vertex has created, right? So I'm not left any trapezoid. Okay, so convinced that the structure is of linear type. Now notice also another fact here, which will sort of take us to the to a most repeated theme over a few days of randomized incremental construction in whichever order you insert this line segment, the final trapezoidal decomposition is the same. You appreciate this fact? Hmm? In whichever order you insert, right? So, essentially what I have to show you is, when you insert a new line segment, it might be so that you have to trim some other thing, right. But the structure is essentially on the depends on the set and not on its order. Yes, now what is your question? Plus one is for the last one? See, I am what? No, no, see, everyone is transferring its charge to the left, no? So, think of this, this vertex where its charge is getting transferred. I mean, if you do not really do not bother about this one, you know, some 3 n plus, some big O of 1. Are you happy? The essential thing I want is that this structure has to be order n, linear. <laughs> Fine, but my counting was correct, I know. This is essentially 3n plus 1. Okay. So now comes a new now this new line segment is created. Now, this new line segment is created. 
fine. What I have to do is, now slowly I am taking you to this randomized incremental function. So you have inserted I lines, this was your structure and if you had inserted I lines, you are sure that the combinatorial complexity of this is order I. Now you have inserted the I plus 1 at line, what do you do? First you have to figure out the cell of the trapezoidal decomposition within which your left end point lies because this would get split in some way. Similarly, then what you can do is possibly, mind you, I have this doubly connected edge list stored with me. So, if I can think of a walk along this line segment that would be jumping from this face to this face, so this I can do. So, I can sort of walk along this line segment on the facial decomposition, fine. That is the reason I put this doubly connected edge list for you. Now, now how do I locate this point in this decomposition? You know essentially I was building my data structure to answer point location queries, but you know do you appreciate this kind of this chicken and egg problem here? You are in a circular logic, no? I was trying to build up a data structure which would allow point query, but look here to build this data structure I need such a thing. Do you appreciate this problem of this? Okay, assume you can do it. <laughs> assume you can do it to, I will sort of later on show you how you can do it, but assuming that you can do it, what you can now do is, you can shoot rays above and below because you for know for this trapezoid what is its upper bounding segment, what is its bottom bounding segment. So, this will sort of divide this cell into two parts, done. So, this is the new trapezoidal decomposition. So, what happens is the earlier bigger one, this was the earlier bigger one, this now gets split as this this and this. So, those of you who had doubts about your counting, now see this did create one here, this did create another here, no? So, 3 is the nucleus of this, fine. Now, what I do is this cell has been taken care of. Now, I do this walking along this line segment, okay. I get into this, this trapezoid. So, I am getting into this new trapezoid. So, this new trapezoid is being sort of pierced by this line segment, right. So, it breaks up the original trapezoid into two parts, this and this. So, I had this, this, this. Again, it pierces through this two. Again, you break up. Again, this pierces through this, this you break up and then it ends here, it is easy to find, no. There again here, you do not need to do a logarithmic search to figure out that it ends in this cell, because here you cannot walk past any further, fine. Here what you do is shoot a ray above and below, <laughs> and create your new trapezoid. So, this is your new subdivision. Now, see in doing so, what you have to do? You had to trim some of the existing bullet shots, no? <laughs> Considering, consider this bullet shot. This was there for an earlier endpoint of a line segment. So, this was there, but this, this line segment has to be trimmed by this vertical line segment which you did shoot earlier has to be trimmed by this newly inserted line segment, right. So, you have to trim it appropriately such that what happens now you see this part will go off, right and this part has to remain. So, you have to do accordingly, right. This part goes off, but this part has to stay. 
So, similarly here also, here also what you have to do, look at this entire bullet path and trim it accordingly. So, here this, here this thing should remain, this should be there and this part should go off. Similarly, here, uh, here this part should be there and this part should go off, right. Now, is my drawing correct, right. So, I have got all trapezoidal decomposition. <laughs> so, when you hit, so what are your essential things that you need to do? For the left end point, figure out the trapezoid that you are in, takes some time, we will figure it out la later. But once I get into that phase, I can walk on this line segment to get to its end. But while going so, I am hitting many earlier short bullet path, which I have to trim appropriately. Fine. This will create some new trapezoid. Now, you obviously appreciate this fact that in the worst case, if you had earlier I lines inserted, which had induced for you order I subdivision this i plus 1th line might disturb you know, all of this order i thing. There can be a worst case scenario and like in all kind of this incremental construction, your worst case might blow up to n square summation of order i. But again you have appreciated this fact that in whichever order I might have inserted this, the final structure is the same, right. And if you agree to this counting that I did earlier, no, this earlier, so then when you have inserted i plus 1 as lines, your number of trapezoids is order i only, no. It might have disturbed a lot in this, but then your previous things must have disturbed some very less. Now we will settle this in a nice way. So, what we will show next is, we will break up for now. So, what we will show next is after, so next Oritro will uh, talk of some data structure, some geometric data structure. And when I again come back in the lecture before uh, lunch, I will do the analysis of this and I will show you that on the expected case, like see this is the common recurring theme. You, you, when you do this incremental construction for Voronoi diagram, right, you insert a point and then you know that the disturbance around in the expected case is not much. Here also I will do the same. I will show you that the expected case for the disturbance for one insertion is order 1, fine. That is what I will show to you and I will show to you that this SART is kind of logarithmic, right. So, on the expectation the disturbance is order 1, logarithmic such for each one to locate its left end point, you have n such line segments. So, roughly I would expect a n log n kind of construction time for creating this subdivision. And what I, I, I mean for this to go through really I need to show to you that you can locate this point in logarithmic time. But mind you, till now I have not shown you like so I had this Voronoi diagram, right. This was a geometric structure for you. I brought in a doubly connected edge list, which was a concrete data structure that supports this subdivision. I have till now sh not shown to you a concrete data structure that supports this subdivision. Now, what should that data structure be like? So, this data structure should be like what I, I have? I have trapezoids, no. So, a trapezoid has a left thing and a right thing. These are vertical lines. So, these are just x coordinates, fine. Now, the problem is <laughs> to give me an x coordinate, I can quickly do a binary search to figure out which interval I lie in. But in here, the problem would be these intervals kind of overlap, no? Because if you drop them, they sort of kind of overlap. So, you really cannot play this game very straight away by just doing binary search on x axis. So, what I have to do is I have to develop for you a data structure that has these segments as well as 
the left endpoints in some way, so that <laughs> given a point, <laughs> you can. I mean, and I am not talking of this logarithm this time. So, given a point, you can quickly figure out that what is the x extent and what I am below, what I am above. So, this data structure would not be a kind of a binary to data structure. It would be kind of a directed acyclic graph such that some of its nodes would be this segment where you have to take a above below decision, but the point is when you have to take an above below decision, your data structure should ensure that you are within this zone only, <laughs> right. See a left right decision on a vertical line segment is easy to take, but if you are asked that I want to determine whether the point is above this line segment or below this line segment then it does not make any sense to look for a vertical slab which is away from this vertical slab induced by this line segment. So, your data structure should be such that it has these segments and these vertical lines placed in an intelligent way and it would be kind of a directed acyclic graph such that you can do this search intelligently. So, I will start in the <laughs> lecture preceding lunch on defining for you a data structure that essentially supports this subdivision. And once I have been able to do this data structure, then I will show that this data structure on the expected case would support a logarithmic query on a query point. But mind you, there is also a problem. <laughs> the analysis that I do is on an evolving data structure. No, I am inserting lines and I am building the data structure. So, most of the analysis is that you have done is your data structure was fixed and then on that you did kind of a randomized analysis, no, skip list is, skip list, oh no, no, skip list is one such data structure. So, your data structure is first fixed and on that you analyze, but in here the data structure is evolving. So, what I will do is I will take a fixed point and I will argue on any random order of the insert. Okay. So, this would be kind of an involved and kind of a nice analysis. So, which I will do uh, in the lecture preceding lunch.